NASA has finally done it. They've just completed the first full sky map using the Spherex telescope and honestly, the results are haunting. For centuries, we've looked at the night sky and seen points of light, but this map reveals the true crushing depth of the void. It is the first time we've seen the entire sky in 96 distinct colors of infrared light. Shades, our eyes aren't a Temesmo built to perceive. What gets me is that we've always treated the universe like a flat image, but Spherex is a wide-angle lens for reality. While telescopes like the James Webb zoom in on tiny, beautiful details, Spherex is mapping the entire forest, 450 million galaxies at once. It's capturing the slow, ancient drift of light from the very beginning of time. I'll be honest, looking at this data changes how you see the night sky. It's hard to shake the feeling that we've been ignoring the silence for too long. This map proves the darkness isn't empty. It's a structured, vibrating history book of everything that ever was. We are finally seeing the ghost in the machine, the haunting blueprint of a universe that is far deeper and far more crowded than we were ready for. Here's the part that always messes with my head. We usually think of space as being black, but to Spherex, it's a Technicolor masterpiece. Think about how we see the world. Human eyes basically work with three main colors, but Spherex is looking at the sky in 96 distinct shades of infrared light. It uses these specialized filters that act like a prism for every single object it encounters. Imagine looking at a crowd of people and instead of just seeing their faces, you could suddenly see their temperature, their age, and exactly how far they are standing from you all at once. That is what those 96 colors allow NASA to do. I can't shake the feeling that our previous maps of the universe were essentially black and white compared to this. By capturing these specific wavelengths, astronomers can measure something called redshift with incredible precision. It's a simple concept, really. As a galaxy moves away from us in the cosmic drift, its light stretches out and turns redder. Because Spherex sees so many shades of red, it can calculate the distance to 450 million galaxies better than anything we've ever built. This is how the map becomes 3D. We aren't just looking at points of light on a flat screen anymore. We are seeing how deep they sit in the void. It's like we've been looking at a paper map of the ocean for centuries, and someone just suddenly gave us the ability to dive beneath the surface. When you look at the 3D structure of these galaxy clusters, the darkness starts to feel less like an empty room and more like a crowded, ancient architecture. Some researchers wonder if we've been missing the most important clues about how the universe is held together simply because we weren't looking at the right shades of reality. It makes you wonder, Ashersi, if the silence of the deep sky is actually hiding a massive connected web that we are only just now beginning to see. But as haunting as this 3D structure is, it's not just the distant galaxies that are revealing their secrets. When NASA turned the telescope toward the stars inside our own Milky Way, they found something even more unsettling. They found the very ingredients that shouldn't be there yet. While Spherex is busy mapping the farthest edges of the universe, it's also doing something a lot more personal, something that hits closer to home. NASA has turned this infrared eye toward our own galaxy, the Milky Way, to search for the very things that made us possible. We're talking about the ingredients for life, water ice, carbon dioxide, and organic molecules. Here's the part that gets me. We usually think of these things as being born on planets. We think of oceans forming on Earth after the world was already here. But Spherex is finding these ingredients in the darkness before the planets even exist. They are hiding inside massive freezing regions called molecular clouds, the stellar nurseries where stars are born. In the absolute silence of these clouds, there is a slow ghostly drift of frozen water and carbon-based chemicals clinging to tiny grains of dust like a winter frost in the middle of a graveyard. I can't help but wonder if we've been looking at ourselves all wrong if these molecules are already there, floating in the void billions of years before a single tree grows or a heart beats, then life isn't an accident. It's an inventory. Spherex is essentially taking a stock count of the universe's pantry. By using absorption spectroscopy, seeing which colors of light are blocked by these frozen chemicals, NASA is figuring out exactly how much life stuff is out there, waiting in the dark 
It's a haunting thought, isn't it? That the water you drank this morning might have been part of a frozen cloud mapped by a telescope, drifting in the darkness long before the sun was even a spark. We are literally made of the leftovers of a cosmic silence that Spherex is finally breaking. But as we map the ingredients for life in our own galaxy, we find ourselves facing an even bigger question. Because the way these clouds and galaxies are arranged isn't just a coincidence, it's an echo an echo of a scream from the very beginning of time itself. If mapping the ingredients for life is the small part of the mission, then mapping the beginning of time is the infinite part. This is where the physics starts to feel like poetry and where the silence of the universe becomes truly deafening. Spherex is looking for clues about a period called inflation. This is the theoretical moment just a tiny fraction of a second after the Big Bang, when the universe expanded from something smaller than an atom to something larger than a galaxy, almost instantly. I'll be honest, it's a concept that's almost impossible to truly wrap your brain around without feeling a little bit of vertigo. I don't know if that idea is 100% right, but it's hard not to wonder when you see the patterns NASA is looking for. If inflation happened, it would have left ripples in the density of the early universe. Think of it like a sound wave frozen in time or the rings of a tree that tell the story of a fire that happened centuries ago. These ripples would dictate where galaxies eventually formed billions of years later, influencing the slow, agonizing drift of matter through the void. By mapping 450 million galaxies in 3D, SphereX is essentially looking for the fingerprint of the Big Bang itself. It's looking at the large-scale structure of the cosmos to see if those ripples follow a specific mathematical pattern or if everything we see is just a happy accident. Scientists call this non-Gaussianity, which is just a fancy way of saying they're looking at the texture of the universe. What gets me is the idea that the universe has a texture at all, that it isn't just a smooth, random distribution of light. If that texture is skewed or clumped in a certain way, it proves that the universe expanded with a specific kind of violence at the very beginning. It's a bit unsettling to realize that the way every galaxy is positioned today, the very map NASA just finished, was decided in the first trillionth of a second of existence. It's like looking at a photograph of a car crash and trying to calculate the exact speed of the vehicles based on where the glass landed. What kills me is that because light takes time to travel, Spherex is effectively a time machine. When we look at those distant galaxies on this map, we aren't seeing them as they are now. We are seeing them as they were billions of years ago. We are living in the aftershock of an explosion so big it is still unfolding 13.8 billion years later. We are using a telescope in 2025 to listen to a scream that happened at the birth of time. It makes the darkness feel a little less like a vacuum and more like a fading, haunted memory. That is the kind of scale that makes you want to close your eyes and just breathe for a second. We aren't just looking at stars, we're looking at the scar tissue of creation, etched forever into the very fabric of the void. It's the ultimate evidence that nothing in this universe happens in total silence. So, where does this leave us? We have a new map, 450 million galaxies, and a three-dimensional model of a universe that is far more complex than we ever suspected. As Spherex continues its mission over the next two years, scanning the sky over and over, we are bound to find things that defy our current theories, holes in the darkness that shouldn't be there, and structures that challenge everything we know about gravity. I'll be honest, it's a little overwhelming. There is a deep, existential weight to finally seeing the entire sky in such detail. It reminds us that we are part of a grand, silent drift through the void, clinging to a rock that is just one flickering point in a sea of millions. It's haunting to realize that NASA has shown us we are just a microscopic piece of an ancient, massive architecture. But maybe that's the beauty of it. We aren't supposed to feel big. We are just lucky we get to see the map at all. We are the universe, looking at its own face, trying to understand the silence that came before us and the darkness that will eventually remain. Thank you for wandering through the deep with me today. If you felt the weight of the cosmos in this journey, please subscribe to The Cosmic Unknown and leave a like. It helps us keep searching for answers in the places most people are afraid to look. 
If you'd like to support our explorations further, consider becoming a member. The map is finished, but the journey is just beginning. Stay curious and keep looking into the deep.